Hi, my name is Maxime Duran. I'm the franchise historian working in Assassin's Creed. I'm super excited to be here to answer your questions regarding Assassin's Creed Origins. Which aspect of Egypt as a historical setting was the most difficult to tackle and why? Having the opportunity uh, to work on an environment like ancient Egypt is incredible. Uh, for us, it's all about doing the historical research because most of ancient Egypt is gone today. Cities have disappeared and what the information that we have is relied on archaeology mostly. And so we work with uh, historians, we work with archaeologists and uh, uh, world famous Jean-Claude Galvin to actually recreate Egypt. Jean-Claude Galvin, he's uh, an artist, he's also an architect and archaeologist and he's drawing water paintings. And so he's doing the same process that we do with concept art, and then he's created exclusive content for us to recreate cities that were lost, like Memphis and Alexandria. So really going into the details of what ancient Egypt was like back then, then we can recreate that into the game and adapt it for uh, the purpose of our game with gameplay, with, uh, with characters, with fiction. At the point of history in which Bayek is going through, how notorious were the Magi? What allowed people to distinguish whether one was a Magi or not? So at that time in history, Magi are very old in, in Egypt. Uh, they've been there for about 2,000 years. First, there were nomadic tribes people, probably fighters that were integrated as a police force, protecting people, protecting the pharaoh. By the time of Bayek, however, Magis are less popular because they're, they are being replaced by the Greek ruler's police force, which are called the Philakis. Bayek, however, uh, is a Magi from Siwa, which is very remote in the desert. And at that point, Philakis haven't yet replaced them. But everywhere else in Egypt, the term Magi is still recognized as, as a protector, as a police force, but they are disappearing. From the new trailer, it looked like Romans will play a much larger role than I had expected in a central story. Without getting too heavily into it, how involved is the Roman presence in Bayek's journey compared to the more internal civil war? So creating this game is an awesome opportunity for us because it is so rich in terms of geopolitical fights and situations. Rome is in a state of civil war at that time. Egypt is also in a state of civil war at that time. And their history will intertwine at the moment where Julius Caesar will go to Egypt to find his arch enemy who is hiding there, Pompeius Magnus. At the same time, Ptolemy XIII will kill Pompeius Magnus and offer his head to Julius Caesar. Cleopatra, who is the queen in exile from, uh, away from her brother and husband, Ptolemy XIII, will also get intertwined into that story where Bayek will find his way. And also this will create a very epic opportunity for us to craft a story about the creation of the Brotherhood, the story of Bayek and the Ptolemy kingdom of Egypt. Were all weapons appearing in the game actually used during that time? In creating this new game, we wanted to uh, bring a lot of efforts on the fight system. And so we wanted to offer a vast variety and range of weapons. So we look into uh, Egyptian weapons, uh, like the kopesh that Bayek will be uh, handling. Uh, we look into Greek and Roman weapons also because they were present in ancient Egypt. And then we look at, at the inspiration from other tribes that could be around Egypt or societies that were around that could trade with Egypt. So we tried to bring some perspective on weapons that could have made their way into Egypt. Uh, but truthfully, uh, when it comes to all the different weapons in the game, you see that the historical weapons will have a description in that sense, and weapons that are more about fun and gameplay will be more described in, in such a, an instance. So it will be clear the line between historical weapons and some of the weapons that are more fantastic and fun to play with also. What would you say is the split between historical accuracy and creativity of the team, and why this percentage? First, there's no percentage that's real. Uh, we have to understand that the way we make these games is that we take the, inform the information, the historical data, and try to integrate that into the game that we're going to make. We have no videos of ancient Egypt, and it's a lost world. So we try to be very creative about the way that we interpret that. So very early on, I remember that this, uh, this Egyptologist, Evelyn Ferron, that we worked with, she mentioned that people had really bad uh, teeth because of the sand that was everywhere in Egypt. So it was integrated into their food. So what it means for us is that we have to think how this will be in the world, that's how this will affect the game that we're making. So maybe it means that they're sent all the time uh, on people's houses, around their gardens, so they have to, to uh, broom that away, for instance. Uh, maybe it's because they, they will have sand in their eyes. So we have to think uh, animation-wise how this is going to be reproduced because we have actors going to a studio around a green screen. They have, to, they have to imagine what is ancient Egypt also. History is a big puzzle box and most of the pieces are missing, and then we have to make a complete picture 
to create this game that we are going to play, uh, to have this, this whole adventure and narrative. And so we have to find a good balance between historical data and then create a vision to make this game uh, live in your hands. Yeah.